Well, what is your reaction when you're looking at that video? Um, deja vu and anger. That th this is my reaction in looking at this video. And uh, I see that nobody really tried to help this teacher out immediately because many times students like to see fights. Um, the teacher just took the punches. I uh, did uh, talk with this teacher and asked before I saw the video how much did this child weigh. He said he didn't weigh a whole lot. But the fact that one of your students is coming at you and you are the protector as a teacher uh, just shows the epitome of disrespect for not only the teacher but for authority, for the state, for the school district, for the other students. How big of a problem is this? A giant problem. We call it the elephant in the classroom that districts don't want to talk about. And these problems are pervasive throughout school districts, be they private, charter, public, whatever. And it's a microcosm of, of society. I taught school for, oh my God, all of my life. I'm, I'm in my 60s now and I started at age 21 and uh, I taught at Grady High School all the way over to Thorough High School, East Atlanta, I've, I've run the gamut. But um, discipline is the number one problem that teachers check off when we survey what are the problems or what are your likes and dislikes, et cetera, is discipline. Across the board. Across the board, across the board. Um, things are out of <coughs> hand, they've been out of hand for a while. And um, I know that we have people who are talking about test scores and why students succeed and don't succeed, but you can't teach that you can't discipline. And other students can't learn when you have two or three children uh, who are acting up. The uh, unfortunate incident that happened at Douglas High School, that young man, he's only been teaching for years, and I take my hat off to him for going into the profession as a young man. Um, he has noticed so many fights, and he was telling me about those, those fights and what the tent, uh, the tenor of the school uh, happens to be. He could have lost his life. But in the position that I am sitting in, uh, it's an everyday occurrence somewhere in this state. Why? Where, uh, uh, because students don't have to have respect for authority. And many of their parents don't have respect for authority either. Uh, I, I, was, I had a drug problem as a, a young person. I heard another minister say that. I was drugged to church constantly, whether I wanted to go or not. Mm -hmm. So I learned what was right and wrong. But today, uh, everything is relative. Anything goes. Everybody has rights. And the few folk who are fighting for those rights are actually impeding upon the rights of everybody else. And speaking of rights, mm -hmm. what rights does a teacher have if they're being attacked by a student directly? Uh, almost none. Uh, to write to try to save their lives. Uh, in fact, when we had advocates uh, for guns, for teachers carrying guns, we knew that we didn't want teachers to carry guns because we are all emotional beings, every one of us, and somebody was going to get killed. Either the teacher was going to kill somebody or the gun was going to be taken away from the teacher and somebody else get killed. So um, you're saying, just to be clear, that teachers have no right to defend themselves. I'm not talking about like a second grader, but if you're a high school teacher and someone who is your size or bigger is attacking you, what can you do well, legally? Well, you, you can defend yourself, but we have to defer that to the attorney. You know, I would tell a person to defend themselves above everything else. It's just like filing a grievance. If an administrator tells you something that's going to uh, hurt you physically, then you have a right not to do it. But every case is different. We shouldn't even have to get that far. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, from disrespect, uh, for not coming to class, for coming in late, for cutting class, etc., has escalated now uh, to violence in these schools. And um, very little is done about it. I remember uh, about 12 years ago, we started a campaign, the elephant in the classroom. We couldn't even, couldn't even get uh, off first basis. I, I talked to my national organization about it, and uh, some of the people told me that's something that a lot of folks don't want to discuss. A lot of the policymakers don't want to discuss Why because though? they want votes, they want to be popular, they don't want to solve the hard problems. So let's allow these teachers to teach and the 90% of the students who want to learn to go to these public schools. See, we have not only had a money erosion for years, we've had a moral breakdown for years. And because everyone has rights, everyone has civil liberties, then uh, things are out of hand now.
they are out of hand, we're going to have to bring them back in. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about training because, of course, teachers, you have to, you know, have a degree and a lot of times you've interned or you've been a student teacher. How are they trained to handle physical altercations? Well, I, for instance, I asked this teacher that has been in the school district now four years, what's the recent training that you've had on physical altercations? He said, zero. Really? None. And uh, we can throw all kind of money out the schools, but it's not going to work unless we take care of the basic foundation. And that's respect for authority, readiness to learn, respect even at home. Because children are coming from somewhere. I don't care what type of home it is, even if it's a foster home. When they come to schools and they respect teachers and they are ready to learn, then teaching can take place and we'll be a better, uh, calmer, gentler society. Mm -hmm. Is it the student's fault? Um, some of it is. Because some students come from good homes and parents don't know what they're doing, but they're on cell phones, they're looking at television, they're listening to music, they're on computers, they have uh, a lot of free time, a lot of cash, uh, peers, and some very good parents, well-meaning parents, have no idea what those children are doing once they are in school. So we definitely need parental involvement, and we need to stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. and and start looking at what does that look like? How are we going to actually make sure it's a reality that parents are involved and responsible for their children going to schools regardless of who's paying for it? Mm -hmm. um, you touched on a lot of subjects here. If you could name three actionable things that could be done right here in Metro Atlanta that would help this problem, what would you say those were? <clears throat> One is to take the organized, this is going to sound self-serving, okay. but uh, I, I put a video out the other day to let folks know we just don't go out the membership cards and we've never just had mm -hmm. uh, collective bargaining here. <laughs> the first thing is to respect your organized teachers' unions and listen to them. We haven't been wrong yet. They don't have to do that. So there's an imbalance of power where the business community is controlling the superintendent's office and putting people on the school board. So that's the first thing that needs to happen. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we need to review our policies, review our policies, and make some hard decisions and run out to the community like they run out to sell charter schools that they're going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Give and, me an example. Um, we have uh, various school board members who will have coffee time or tea time and et cetera. And as this teacher was telling me, that was uh, knocked down in that video. He said, they, li they, they get our ideas, but they don't listen to us. I said, oh my God, nothing has changed. I'm 63 years old. This has been happening forever, and I've been in Georgia all of my life. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to review our policies. And what policies would you change? Is it, would it be the right for teachers to defend themselves, hold parents responsible? We need to write some first. We okay. need to write some first. We review what we have on the books, and then let's write some hard policies. Uh, but make sure that we do this with the cooperation of uh, ministers, uh, community leaders, organized teachers, organization, uh, so that the whole community knows what's expected of parents and children when they come to schools mm -hmm. that all of us are paying for. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that we work with the General Assembly, regardless of their politics, be it left wing or right wing or or the lobbyists who are well paid to make sure that public schools look bad. Some of them, some of them are paid to do that, and uh, to push this new uh, charter, so-called silver bullet movement that's going on. Uh, that we work with the state government to get behind these school districts instead of just imposing what they want on these school districts. To understand that every one of them happens to be different. The community is different. Uh, that's why we uh, embrace community schools to take care of those who want to learn. But everybody that doesn't want to learn, they'll need to be in school. And let's talk a little bit more about some of the videos, you know, that I mentioned, a lot of them have gone viral. When you look at the video from the story from yesterday, what goes through your mind? I was angry the minute I saw it. And the first thing I thought, if that teacher had a gun, that would be a dead child. Really? That's why we're not advocating for guns. That's, you thought that? Looking yeah, at the video. that's exactly what I thought. Because until you are hit in the face and knocked down, and every day you're on edge when you leave a school and 35 and 40 children and uh, administrators clamoring down your throat, until you are in that position, 
don't pass judgment. And we've been in it too many times. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you all receive complaints from the teachers anytime there's an incident, or is it just the ones who are part of the union? Oh, constantly. They're okay. constantly complaining. And uh, many of the teachers, the morale is just down to the bottom. I mean, teachers and adults are managed, and children get by with everything short of murder so far. Mm 